Dar, dar, festi festi, 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 welcome to festi first day. My name's Bean. I'm Renda. I'm Archie. Today we've got on Archie. And if you haven't already, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, which they do on the old. Give us five stars on any audio platforms. You heard. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, you like that? I like that a lot. Yeah, man. yeah. So we're going to start beautiful. off with icebreakers. We don't always do it, but if we've got a guest on, we want the audience to uh, try and get to know who we've got on as such. So before we ask you who you are, what you do, we're just going to go through some random icebreakers. Take it away. So... First ever track you remember having on an MP3 or a CD, something that really, you know, resonates, something that you know comes to mind. first came to my head? The, uh, I used to be a little sucker for JLS back in the day, boy. Oh, yeah. Did you used to be a JLS, yeah, boy? Yeah, a Merry bit. Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> a little bit of heart beat again. That's the one. Yeah. A little bit of heart won't beat again. I've got to say that one. Yeah. Yeah, I reckon that's <laughs> yeah, that that is the worst the one I've heard so <laughs> much. <laughs> worst but best. People are like, yeah, gorillas. Yeah. Like, <laughs> 50 cents. Yeah, yeah. Time won't beat again. Yeah. That's nice. I like Jesus. It's that a good tune. Great start. <laughs> Get onto it, you know. Um, is there a song that you listen to that you think um, anyone that you know closely would think, oh, why is he listening to that? Like, you might have already ooh, answered that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, from, maybe, maybe JLS. I don't know. I've got. What do you listen to now, don't you think? The, the example well, for me is, rascal stuff. is like Avril Lavigne. Avril Lavigne? Yeah. <laughs> um, Avril Lavigne. I don't know. I've got two. See, my car, I've got an old car. It hasn't got an aux cord. So I've just got two CDs that I took from my parents, which consist of... <laughs> Classic. Take That and Adele. So <laughs> nice. I've got the Adele 21 album. I've yeah. got the old Take That album. What so. Take That tune are you listening to? That you sometimes, you know, previous uh, track to start it again. I like a million love songs. What's that one? You're a soppy yeah, guy then, yeah, I take yeah. it. Oh, of course, yeah. maybe, yeah. <laughs> tap in occasionally. Yeah. Then, you know. cool. That Adele 21 album is incredible. Oh, that's though. glorious. One man, thing. Yeah. Unbelievable. Chasing Pavement's on that. Yeah, someone yeah. like you. Oh, that's a bad one. Go <laughs> that's the wrong song. Jason Waterfall. Listen to the Los Angeles. Oh, Archie's got Riz listening yeah. to these two. <laughs> Talk to him, boys. Um, I'll skip Guilty Pleasure because I think we know about yeah. that. But uh, biggest fear. Biggest fear. Ooh. I don't like crocodiles. I don't like mm. crocodiles at all. I think. They're like dinosaurs, aren't they? They're they are. Crazy. There's something about a crocodile that freaks me out. I don't like. Um, I don't like shark. Anything to do with the water, oh, I don't like yeah, at all. Man of me. man of my ilk. Yeah. yeah. Anything I, to do with the water, I don't like. You know I have what? a recurring dream where I get eaten by a shark. Yeah, that's a terrifying one. I just don't know how I'd go about it. Mm. And being in the water, oh, could you imagine just under? It's murky, it's like the deep blue. You and can't see shit. Yeah, yeah. And the but big nose can. just pops out on you. Yeah. Or, I'm not sure about or that. The, or you're in the dark and you see the eyes light up. Yeah. Yeah, you I'm know, not a fan. I'm you know what fan. it is, yeah? It's like if you're in the dark, but you're on foot, like in a forest or whatever, you can run. If you're in the dark and in the sea, swimming oh, don't God, feel the same yeah. as getting away, well, does it? It's because yeah, no, the prey, predators, sorry, can whatever, swim. Can swim faster than you. So you're fucked. Yeah, saying that, I reckon a lot of predators can run faster than me as well. <laughs> yeah, but I'm fucked either way. But you'd fancy your chances <laughs> on land rather than not. Yeah. The YouTube idea, crocodile versus man <laughs> on on a uh, hundred meter first. sprint. That's not a knife. You heard it here first. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. <laughs> Next one. Um, if you're on a desert <laughs> island, <laughs> uh, if you're on a desert island, what would the one album you'd be that would well you take? Oh God, man! One album. One album. Jealous. <laughs> Jealous. Yeah. Oh, I'm trying really hard not to say Adele. Or take that right now. You could. I mean, it's the album Maybe you're I stuck like, with. There's one. 50 cent one that I quite like. A bit of a switch up. Is it the yeah, one with the bullet hole? Get it's the one with the bullet hole, yeah. 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 The one with like that 21 one questions and all that yeah. sort of thing. Yeah. I do like a bit of that. I can tap into that occasionally. Yeah, that's an time. incredible album. That's mm. a beautiful album. Yeah. So I think maybe that. I've got a lot of respect for that. Yeah, I had that on CD. 
I don't you said jail, that. that's down here. <laughs> 50 cent coming back work up. Work them all out for yeah. me. Yeah, average and out. Give me your time. Yeah. Give me time. I'm working all out. Uh, this is a bit more game gamer orientated. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. did you ever have... Were you Xbox or PlayStation first? Or? Xbox. My older brother had an Xbox. And what uh, was your... I had a PlayStation 2 before that. Okay. What was your first so. gamer tag on Xbox? Ooh. Well, my brother's... Oh, it's a bit cringy saying it now. About the time I thought it was electric. It would get me all the street cred. He called himself... I strum your mum. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, that's bad. It is really, really bad. That's like, horrible. At the time, I used to be like, Do you know what my older brother's called an Xbox? Whereas now when people ask me, I was thinking, oh, shit, I hope he doesn't ask me this. It's not yeah. even a number on the end. Tragic. It was just, I strum your mum is yeah, online. No, there wasn't just straight up, yeah. Oh, that was horrible. He was, was lucky was man horrible. to get that. <laughs> <laughs> well, did you try the draft? Yeah, something? like, I strum your mum 69 <laughs> and he's like. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck's sake. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Of the, the so they're the icebreakers, but first off, yep. who are you? What do you do? Give a little, give the audience a bit of an introduction, a little, um, what do they call it? A whistle stop tour. Oh yeah. Yeah. So my name is Archie. I am 23 years old and I paint for a living. Well, yeah, I guess I paint for a living. Artist slash painter um, at Wallace on the Wall. So there we go. I think Check out the socials. Check out the socials indeed at Wallace on the wall on Instagram. How, the time. how did you, where did that journey begin? Oh, uh, the journey began while I was in college. I just thought I, I was working at a, a pizza restaurant at the time and I thought I, I didn't really enjoy being a waiter so much. I just thought as a way of making potentially a bit of extra money on the side, I'd start painting people's dogs and then. So I did a couple of free bits for like friends and family to build a portfolio, put it on Facebook, which at the time was, uh, it was my best work. But now I look back on it, I thought oh, it's a little bit ropey. And then just sort of the years gone by over COVID, I tried like experimenting with like people portraits and things like that. And then since then, I've just been going at that full time, mm -hmm. just doing portraits for various sort of people. Since then. Why is liquid enamel? Lick, oh, yeah. boy, you've been doing your research. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. So, you know, like um, war, people do war hammers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to do... Um, uh, war so, Yeah, it was war hammer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. There was something else, like space marines. <laughs> that was <laughs> yeah. a war hammer version. Oh, okay. Yeah. And yeah. Iraq, no, yeah. tyranids. They're oh, a war so hammer variant. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I used to... So, you know those little tinlets you get? Yeah, of the paint. So, yeah. I paint with those, but using a pipette. So instead of using a paintbrush and uh, paint to apply it to the canvas, I use like a little pipette and use the liquid enamel. I, I pretty much sort of suck the liquid in and then just place it around the canvas mm. as a sort of an alternative to painting. Yeah. And I put up like little walls so that the liquid doesn't bleed. I was going to say, that's one thing I was going to say straight away. Surely yeah. that's a mess. Yeah, because you can't really control it as much, yeah. but it just means it takes a, a lot longer. Yeah. Because with the paintbrush, you can cover like so much of an area in, yeah. I don't know, in like 10 minutes. Whereas with liquid enamel, that might take like three hours. Yeah. From what we've seen from your work. So over this conversation, I'll throw up some examples of your work. But yep. it looks like it adds a completely different texture from if you were using yeah, it the does. brush. So it makes it raised from from the canvas. So usually a painting, albeit if they had like thicker areas of paint, there'd be a little bit of texture there. But mine's sort of raised. So when you catch it from certain lights, I use this sort of the bit that I cre use to create the walls. It sort of is all raised by like sort of half a centimeter from the canvas. So when you see it in real life, you can sort of get an idea from the texture. But um, on photos, it doesn't do it as much of a justice. But at certain angles, you can kind of mm. show what it's all about. But I mainly just do it because it's different to what other artists use. I haven't actually seen someone who uses it in the way that I use it. I suppose that's making the niche for yourself, though, isn't it? Because, yeah. I mean, it not sound horrible, but there's a lot of paintings out there that are just with a brush. Do you know yeah. what I mean? So it's yeah, hard yeah, yeah. to get into that area yeah, of art. It is. It is. And a, a lot of the time as well, unless you go the traditional route, which I decided not to go, which is university, a lot of the time it completely depends on your following on social media because mm -hmm. people will tend to buy art because of the artist's name, not because of the art itself. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Unless they're really compelled to buy a certain certain piece. But um, most of the time it's it's by the artist. So I thought 
a way of separating myself, like like you say, it would be to use the liquid enamel as opposed to just mm -hmm. the standard material. So it's being creative within art though, isn't it? I think yeah. yeah. It's trying to yeah, yeah, it's sure. giving it a go. Just trying to sort of experiment with things and stuff. The woman, shout out Sue at the art trading company in Bungie. There we go. You had. But <laughs> you had. You had it here first. <laughs> <laughs> but Sue, she told me she's the woman I go to in Bungie. She told me about the technique and I thought I'll just give it a little go. And the first one happened to be, because uh, I'm a massive Arsenal fan, the first ever try I gave it was of Gabriel Martinelli, mm -hmm. who plays for Arsenal, and I really like him as a player. And then I managed to get the painting to him, which was then sort of kick-started that journey. Yeah, so that journey how from did that point. It, yeah, so what, one of the sort of next topics was sort of commissioned if you like yeah. um so you mentioned gabriel martinelli is that like the first sort of breakthrough as such and how did how yeah. did that even other than you doing the piece did i did you speak to him before if not how did you then get it to him how did that all so unfold with my work from the very start i used to because obviously it's hard to build like a client base before you've done any work yeah so the first ever promotional piece I did when I still did my pet portraits was Vogue Williams. Mm -hmm. She's like a, a radio DJ and sort of social media presence. And she was kind enough to let me do a pro promotional piece of work for her in, ex in exchange for some exposure. Mm -hmm. And this was while I was still waitering doing the, the, the pizza stuff. And her shout out got me like 750 followers off, off the sort of mark, mm -hmm. 60 clients. Yeah. And wow. from there, you just sort That's of... That's a good turnover from 750. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's nearly so, fucking 10%. That's it was unreal. It's the only thing is, that. I didn't... <laughs> what did you say? It's no, babes. Sorry, I'm a data analyst. <laughs> he said 8%. <laughs> yeah, he's like, oh, yeah, I thought you said that's a lot of babes. I was like, yeah, potentially. But <laughs> if you, if you calculate it, 8%. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's two you babes in 499. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so I managed to build like a client base from there with my pet portraits, which sort of, with supply and demand, I could sort of you know, just go from there, you build a little bit of a portfolio and then you'd find like friends of friends of these people you mm. didn't work for would reach out. So that went for a while. And then um, I just decided it's, although I enjoy it, it's not something that is potentially sustainable going into the future. You can't really create prints of pet portraits and things like mm -hmm. that and have people buy them. So I thought I'd move into athletes and that's when I literally reached, I literally reached out to him on Instagram. Yeah, I just fired him a message um in my old office at the time and um i just said oh look i've done this piece of you it's to commemorate your olympic gold medal win with brazil it's in the brazil colors and whatnot what do you think if you like it i'd love to get it to you and at the time because he has a social media manager which i didn't know he just replied nice one mate and i thought oh shit oh, yeah fuck i've just done like seven days of work experiment experimenting with a new thing new mm. materials and the materials aren't cheap just to get a nice on mate i thought oh that is brutal and then an hour later i went back to my phone and he'd messaged me saying can you bring it to me and can you do this one as well i thought fucking hell. i was buzzing i was like oh mm. my god and I I bet, yeah. the message. Wow. It was a photo of him biting the olympic gold medal yeah yeah so Literally two days after that, I was meant to be going on holiday for two weeks. So I couldn't crack on straight away. And as soon as I got back, I got through it, sent in the message like a month later. And then we just arranged drop off, dropped it off to him. When I dropped it off to him, he posted it on. He was, he was kind enough to just post it off yeah. on his uh, Instagram stories off of his own back. And Emmy Martinez's wife, who's one of my latest clients, saw the Instagram story, messaged me and said, oh, I'd love to get one done for Emmy. Mm -hmm. Obviously, he used to be because he used to be the goalkeeper for Arsenal. Yeah. He helped Gabriel Martinelli settle into the team when yeah. he first joined from Brazil. So that was their connection. And um, since then, he'd won the Copa America and recently the World, World Cup, Cup yeah. which is some of my next paintings to do. Yeah. Which, um, you know. So the Martinelli one, yeah. what was that experience like? Obviously, I, uh, sorry if I'm making an assumption, but was this the first sort of, high um uh yeah like legitimate work for like because i commissioned those those pieces whereas before i was doing a lot of promotional stuff yeah so i'd done like i'd been up to hashtag united before which i'd done like cartoon sort of work for but a lot of it was 
promotional. It's all the, is it Bakerholics as well? Uh, Baker, Bakerholics was uh, a commission. I suppose you've done a lot of kind of favours to get where you are. Yeah, literally. But literally. that's a good way because yeah. when you've got, a, say, small portfolio, which you probably did have yeah. then, you need to do that kind of stuff to get yourself yeah. on the ground. Yeah, 100%. Like with the pet portraits, for example, when you just put up two sort of bog standard photos of friends' paintings, mm. there's not a lot. I remember there was one guy who messaged me after a week saying, oh, I just saw your work. And I reckon it's sort of one of my family friends gave him a bit of a nudge. I can't make this guy struggling a bit. Like sort of help <laughs> him out a little bit. And I remember I did the painting. And to be honest with you, until I did like the promotional stuff for the people with like a fairly good social media presence, that's when it's sort of I started to get a little a, a little bit busier a lot more work mm. and then I did the with the Bakerholics with, for Morgan I did a cartoon for her and that was something I went I was sort of experimenting with different styles mm -hmm. I went from pet portraits to cartoons to a certain style of people portrait and then I went into the enamels yeah and the enamels is now is what I yeah. sort of it looks with. incredible you've, as well. you've got to find your niche when you yeah. get into that though haven't you yeah, you experiment. That. yeah. and I from what I've said I mean that you know, we've had a bit of research and had a look, but from what we've seen, just having a look, the difference between the cartoon and yeah. the enamel stuff you're doing is like mental. Like it look, the enamel stuff looks crazy. Yeah, the the enamel stuff I'm really proud of, to be fair, because it's one of those things that not all, saying the cartoon stuff isn't oh, good no, by all I means, know what you mean. but I'm just saying like that looks like I on another level. It's like, like the, the difference in because with the cartoon, it's trying to get the balance right. Like I was I was drawing up my own caricatures and stuff like mm -hmm. that and. Well, to be honest, when I look back on my cartoon work, it is like extremely basic mm -hmm. in terms of I can... It's I kind can of what they want though, isn't it? Almost. <laughs> kind of, but I completely understand as well at the same time, if someone else to see it was to see it, who did art or people outside of art, they'd probably think I could probably do that. And they mm. probably could, to be fair. It's just that at the time I had the idea to potentially do it, but at the same time, I don't know, because it was new, I thought, the work was really good. The Bakerholics one I like. Obviously, I look back on all my old work and think I could have done this there. And you'll this always there have and that. It a little bit. You'll look back on the Martinelli one, I'm sure, yeah. in one day, and you'll be like, oh, I could have done this. Yeah. Yeah, potentially. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we think that with our podcast. Yeah. You look at our old podcasts, they're nothing like yeah. they are now. Podcasts. The a bit cheeky, weren't they? Oh, yeah. God. Yeah. Like, like my first pet portraits. Were, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Even my music, I go back and listen to it now. Some of the old stuff, I think, Jesus yeah. Christ. But that's all It's all learning, yeah. isn't it? Evolution. We're young yeah. as well, so... A hundred percent. I'm working on now, I'm working on like a big piece which requires me to do like loads of different uh, paintings of people. Uh, it's basically like a, a collage of about 40 different people. And I even find then, because it's like a slightly new style because I'm working with oil, the first painting is way worse than like the 10th. So yeah. mm -hmm. like you say, I'll probably look back on my stuff now that I'm doing it and think, what was I thinking then? Like, mm. There's some seriously rascal stuff that I put out thinking, oh, that's unbelievable. Mm. But now I think, oh, that's not so good. So I guess it all sort of... Imposter syndrome. Yeah, yeah. It all comes with the journey, I guess. Martinelli, what was his house like? Like, tell me MTV Cribs, was his fridge empty or was it full? Did he <laughs> yeah. have butter in it? Yeah, yeah. What did he have? Was what it kind fridge? of, did you see, did he have like his crepes out and about or were they, uh, yeah. You know what, when I turned up, it was like, it was an unusual experience because I drive like a little 2005 Renault Clio Extreme. Extreme. 1.2 litre, 37 horsepower. And I was rolling down this road. <laughs> <laughs> just for the listeners I was rolling down this road and I thought fucking hell, I look a bit out of my depth there like I don't want to sort of I don't want to creep around because I was about half an hour early because traffic was alright on the way up to London so I parked outside another bloke's house <laughs> and I was a little bit nervous because obviously I'm an Arsenal fan and I didn't know how to hype myself up so I put my my, re my American rap playlist on. I started, <laughs> started blasting pop smoke out of my car speed <laughs> <laughs> and I was just, <laughs> Just <laughs> that, trying to get myself in the zone and I noticed like some lights and some some curtains got drawn from the house that I was parked outside of and they probably thought who is this absolute creep <laughs> parked outside my house blasting pop smoke in a little Renault Clio I said, oh, fucking hell. I sort of sat there for 30 minutes in silence went up and when I got to his I, I just remember him peeking around his curtain just to sort of check check if it was me because I let him know I was coming I remember thinking, 
fucking hell, this is unusual. Like seeing him, he's got the, I'll be honest, boys, he's got the best skin I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> really? He's got the uh, clearest skin. I remember he opened the door. He's quite young though, isn't he? So he's mm. young, but Jesus, when I was that young, I was all over the shop. <laughs> I had to take tablets just to sit <laughs> down a little bit. But when he opened the door, I was like, Jesus, it was like that Brazilian glow. Mm. And uh, God, I'm getting a bit too, uh, a bit too enthusiastic. Yeah. <laughs> he's not watching. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I remember he answered the door and he let me in. And I'd forgot to take my paintings out of my boot. So I was just loitering around in his house. And I remember thinking, oh, fucking hell, yeah. I remembered why I was there. I went back <laughs> to my car, got the paintings out, brought them in. And it was him, all his friends, all really lovely, and his agent. And pretty much he just sort of, he's a lovely bloke, to be fair. Really, really nice guy. Made me feel welcome. And he just asked me, like, I remember he just asked me if I wanted a drink or whatnot. And then he was... He ran upstairs and then I was just left talking to his agent. And that was a really unusual experience because because I work on my own all the time. Like when you first get the message saying, Oh, can you do this piece? Like it's an incredible feeling. But then you got a long time to sit on yourself and, and think about it and you sort of desensitize as you yeah. a little bit. So you're doing this painting, just thinking at that point you're just painting a picture in front of you and you forget who it's sort of for. And his agent was telling me, Oh yeah, I'll let all my other clients know about it. Um, in case they want a painting as well. I thought, yeah, the clients, because I didn't know who he was at this point. I thought, that's unusual. Then he told me he's off to Madrid tomorrow because he like manages like Vinicius Junior as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because he, I think he manages a lot of the Brazilian players. And that's when I thought, holy shit, like this is like sort of, there's two different lives here. Like I'm not yeah. sort of used to this in a way. <laughs> yeah. But unfortunately, Vinicius hasn't come calling. Mm -hmm. But maybe in the future. But Yet. <laughs> yet. But mm. yeah, he's a really nice guy. And the whole experience was lovely. Like he gave me a signed shirt, which I was buzzing about on the way home. As soon as I was, like left the left the uh, house, I was on the on the driveway in my car, like sending photos to my family group <laughs> yeah. and stuff like that. Mum was buzzing. She Mum, I've made it. Like, I thought, Mum, you never could give me a signed shirt. Give me a signed shirt. <laughs> to, a cool? to a football fan though, that's massive. Yeah. Like for me, being a West Ham fan, if I did that to like Declan Rice and he gave me a yeah. fine shot, I'd be like cuddling mm. it to bed for like weeks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll be wearing it everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was on my car seat on the way home. I was just occasionally just sort of looking. Yeah. Did you have the seat belt? Yeah. You ain't going nowhere. You're doing okay, babe. Slow down. Yeah. Extra yeah. slow. Yeah. 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 Baby yeah. in the car. Yeah. 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 Baby on board. Like, <laughs> Want me to put on Adele? <laughs> On the 21. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Don't worry, Tim. Yeah. I've seen a lot of videos of uh, Gabriel Martinelli and yeah. he seems like a proper Londoner because obviously he's been brought up you in think, that yeah. atmosphere. He, he, well, he seems like a Londoner but a proper nice like interactive young guy because he's quite, still quite young, isn't he? He's so young. Like what, what I didn't realise, well, I did realise but I, I've sort of, because when I was face to face with him, obviously he just, one thing I, it, it definitely does do is when you see them on, on the TV and you see them playing football and stuff like that and there's that massive fan culture around them it puts them on this crazy pedestal where you think they're just some sort of like it's like they don't even exist as yeah, real humans God, yeah. and when I met him and then when I saw him just in his comfort zone I just thought this guy's just a normal bloke like he's talking talking to all his friends and stuff like that and his friends are all so sound and they're all so I don't know they're just really humble nice blokes mm. like if you'd have met them without knowing who they were, you'd never guess what they do ever. Because he yeah. wasn't brash, he wasn't loud, he wasn't like shouty about it. Mm. And um, I forgot what the fucking question was now. What was the question again? Was he like London? Oh yeah, that was it. No, but he was, yeah, his English was, like his English was good, but obviously he'd moved from Brazil to England, I think from the fourth tier in Brazil mm. to England when he was 18 years old. Didn't know a lick of English. And I think I met him when he was 21 20 mm -hmm. so he'd only been there for like a couple of years that's so a completely new environment but yeah he was just a nice bloke so obviously you've fucking name dropped oh, martinelli gosh, yeah. um we do have a list of so i don't know if they're all commissions but some names that we've seen on your insta so i'm going to read for them all if right. you can maybe go through some stories like you've explained with Martinelli, oh, right. okay, yeah, feel yeah. free to make them as short or, or as long as you want. But we've got, yes, yeah, so Martinelli was top of the list. And we've got Martinez, who yeah. you briefly mentioned. Uh, Gabriel Jesus. Gabriel Jesus. I've not, that was an original piece. Mm -hmm. So this is not actually for him, but I'm going to create some, because well, I'm working on a piece at the moment, which is really, 
it's not, as I say about doing the enamel, it's not my usual style and it's taken me months and months to do. Mm -hmm. And once that's out the way, I need to rejig my website and then I'm going to create some original stuff of it and I'm going to try and get that to him. Mm -hmm. I'm speaking one of it. Uh, one of the people in his team, I think, follows him. Yeah. Follows me, sorry. So I'm going to try yeah, yeah. and get through to them because I think that would be quite a cool one. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. We've got, I'll skim through them quickly, but then you let us know which ones are, you know, just personal pieces or yeah. whatever. So I've got Albama Yang, Connor Ben, yeah. Saka, Seb on Golf, Spencer yeah. Owen, you talk about hashtag, and obviously Bakeholics already mentioned. But yeah. yeah, talk about Albama Yang. Is that, what's that Mate, one? Albama Yang. That one is too. mental. I, see, that, that, that looks was so with, good. So that one was done with, I did that with Broken Glass. To be honest, I did that years ago. Mm. Just as that, I think that was my first people portrait I did while I was still doing my pet portraits. And it was just sort of sitting there and I thought, oh, you know what, I don't really know what I'm going to do with that one. So I'll throw a bit of broken glass pretty much over the top, which is the, the effect that it makes now. Yeah. And again, that one was an original piece at the time. But since then, I've been in contact with his agent um, because Barcelona shared it on while he was at Barcelona, they shared it onto their social media platform. Oh, really? So when Barcelona shared it onto their social media platform, Abamyang and his wife saw the portrait, mm -hmm. um, and I think his agent saw that through them. And then I was just, and then I reached out to the agent, and without going into too much detail, I'm pretty much the same thing, trying to get that actively get that yeah. to him. Trying to yeah. trying to make the yeah. this tough when he's moving about so much oh, recently. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So used to be, I made that portrait when he was an Arsenal player. Oh fuck it! Really? Yeah. I made it so long ago. I made I painted that years ago, and it was literally like there's so many pieces that I don't know whether other artists relate or not, but you create so much work that you think I'm not totally comfortable putting this out yet, or it doesn't really align with like like with the stuff that I post on my social media, for example that's probably 20% of the work that I create mm. because you sort of, one, you set a sort of particularly standard for yourself. Two, if you're particularly busy, I just, I'm terrible with it. I forget to take photos of the work that mm. I create. Mm. And sometimes if it doesn't align with the specific direction that I want to go with, with my social media, I'll choose not to post it. Mm -hmm. Like over Christmas, I had a lot of pet portraits that I was doing. Mm -hmm. So I got through about, I don't know, so I get through about 12 pet portraits in December. I won't post any of them because moving forward, I want to go into more of the athlete direction, yeah, yeah. which I've been lucky enough to do with my recent clients. Yeah, so I created the thing for Connor Ben just to practice my enamel moving forwards because I saw a cool photo of him and I thought, um, I did it, I did it. He saw it on his social media and I was going to take it up to him, but sort of complications got in the way and then that never sort of materialized mm -hmm. and i was going to even get i, I want to get prints made of that again so obviously yeah. he's meant to fight in the summer i think it is and i was in contact with someone from his team as well who had mm. seen it because he'd put it on his story so that's something again i'd like to push going forward and sounds like you got lots of opportunities brewing really it's like opportunities brewing but it's like, you never know if it's going to yeah, yeah it's but, an unusual one because when i because when i do do the things like the commission pieces it feels a lot more, it's just a lot more solidified because it's like certain, you know, it's mm -hmm. going to go to them. Whereas sometimes I do the original work and I think on my social media, it's sort of the lines are blurred between, because I've met, I've been lucky enough to meet a couple of these people now, like what is for the people and what mm -hmm. is for the original stuff. But all my original work is basically done on the purpose of getting prints made moving forward. Mm -hmm. So I, I think it's beneficial to... for you to post it on your social media anyway, like you're done. Cause if anything, the perspective of that, they might be commissioned is, is better to look at for yeah. people who might just be checking out your profile. Oh my God, yeah. he's done this, 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 and this. this. Yeah. Yeah. I you guess know, so. I mean, it it's would... almost that like, Fake it till you make it type. Yeah, I guess, mate, there, there's, Although def you've, there's you definitely know. an element of that. Like it's one of those things as well where I've, I get a lot of friends saying, oh, you done with it? And it's sort of, you have to let them down softly and be like, no, mate, this is like mm. an original piece sort of thing. Like I'd love to get it to him potentially. And, mm -hmm. But I think the reality is these guys are so busy a lot of the time. Yeah, definitely. That That's probably not on their, you know. Well, the celebrities have been there, haven't they? They're busy. Yeah, yeah. there's Especially a lot going on. you got to think of... 
Well, footballers and fighters are probably busiest. Most footballers are training five, six days yeah. a week. Yeah. Fighters like are training seven camps. days a week. They're like yeah. tunnel yeah. vision. For Especially if they're coming up to a fight, then they're going to be completely Mate, engrossed in what they're doing. 100%. Like when I took the, when I was done, because I'd finished the paintings for Martinez about a month before I actually took them up to him. Mm -hmm. Because I, I was in direct contact with his wife because she was the one who reached out to me. But he was, because he obviously plays for Aston Villa now. I think they didn't go on a run of winning or what sort or, or, or They changed like managers, didn't they? I think, yeah, I think it was last year at some point. And I think they just weren't on a good run. And she messaged me saying like, I was all right if we sort of, delay it delay it because i think with these sort of professional athletes it sort of it seems to me like their lifestyle is so all-encompassing like a win or a loss it's the difference between how the rest of their week goes yeah, until yeah, yeah. they play the next game mm -hmm. so i think aston villa i think they're on like a three a three loss skid and that was when i was sort of arranging to go up and it was one of those things where it's like you don't want to meet them and they don't they probably don't want to meet you on their one day off. Yeah. And they're probably not in the best headspace. Yeah. Yeah. They haven't so, got the time to spare any, like they need their full mentality on getting back and winning. Not right, by 100%. Yeah, piece I mean, of work. Cause I did a, I did a suit. I did his Argentinian travel bag. I was lucky enough to do that before the world cup. His wife asked me a couple of weeks before or like three weeks before, oh, can you do this? I know it's late notice, but can you des like design and paint his travel bag for the World Cup. So she sent me through a suitcase, which is like, I, I go from doing a normal canvas to working on like a Louis Vuitton bag. So I was shitting myself. Was like, Did you ever get tempted to I stuff some drugs in there? <laughs> 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 what, bust them on the way there? Yeah. do England a favour today. <laughs> yeah. 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 That didn't pan out too well. No, I'm, I'm actually so glad they Fuck won the World Cup. Yeah, same as we felt. Mate, to be honest, I'll see. Oh, that was perfect. Yeah. She was saying, she was like, oh, before... Um, <laughs> I was talking that she, oh, before you know the World Cup goes on, if they win, maybe I'll get some more portraits done. So I was thinking, well, as much as I'd love England to win, it's yeah. a pretty handy second option for me. <laughs> yeah. 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 And I saw him on like Argentina's page. They were showing him him walking onto the plane with a bag and stuff like that. And it was like my little designer. I thought, fucking hell, that's unreal to be crazy. Fun. But um, but yeah, I took this up to him the day before they were playing Man City, mm -hmm. and it was his birthday, and although obviously it was a bit like if it was any of us she'd be out until fuck, i don't know what time you boys stay out until but it'll be out until probably quite a lively time you're mm -hmm. probably going to be written off for the next couple of days after that yeah, yeah but i was parked up at the bottom of the drive and you see all the other players leaving his birthday party sort of coming out and i'm just sitting well, i'm sitting there with my dad because i hadn't slept for two days because amazon fucked up with the delivery on a lot of my materials so I got them with literally most of them with 48 hours to spare. Really? Mm. So I hadn't slept for two days. It was Wednesday morning and I slept on Friday night. So Fuck. my dad took us off and our little, we were sort of bubbling around and our Adele Ford playing. Galaxy, Adele yeah. playing, of course, always. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Up the A11. I remember I was laying there like that. Just sort of, oh, Rolling in on. the deep. <laughs> <laughs> Don't go chasing <laughs> pavements. <laughs> 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 But yeah, we were going up there and it was so weird to like, you see these people coming out and you think, fucking hell. Like again, it's like you get a short window into their little life and then, and then we were off again. Had the shittest McDonald's I've probably ever had in my life. Mm. Dad got wrap of the day and it was absolutely honking like. Have one those today? That. Oh yeah. Yeah. Nice. Crisp, sweet chili crispy one, baby. Oh baby, yeah. That's what my dad went for. Oh, that was oh, an absolute shock. Got shocking. me done. Um, so regardless of commission, personal work, out of all of them, of every piece of work you've done, what would you say is your favourite out of those? Like, from an artistic Ooh, perspective. The glass one is pretty funny. I do like the glass one. I, I, I'll be honest, like, the, the Connor Ben one in person mm. is probably... Like, because cause that was an original piece. I had... Uh, control over the picture I select. Yeah. So back in the days, I used to do pet portraits. Some woman, she send you a photo of their dog, oh, and then right. she sent me a photo taken of their on dog a motorola, drinking out of a out of a bucket, <laughs> and I could only see the top of its head. I thought, oh, I don't know how I'm going to get around this. So I asked what breed it was. It was like a poodle or something like that. 
And I just searched up on Google Images what that sort of dog was. Painted it. Yeah. I don't think she was big into her social media. She was an older, older woman, bless her. Lovely lady. But I sent her a photo of the painting while it was done thinking, fucking hell, I hope she doesn't realise that this isn't a photo she sent me. She was like, oh my God, that's amazing. It looks just like her. So I was like, fucking hell, it's a bit of a touch. Yeah, <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe the good thing dogs look like dogs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Wouldn't think it, but well, you don't see like a dog walking down in a trench coat compared to one with a mohawk, so it's yeah. hard, you know. So the Google was, images did me a little yeah. solid there. I suppose as an artist, though, realistically, you an artist knows what a good photo to go in, especially yeah. what you're doing with liquid enamel. Yeah, you know what will be a good photo 100%. in that. So you so, having control over that will make mm -hmm. a better yeah. picture yeah. in your view. Yeah, the so Connor Ben and the Aubameyang one is so, yeah. so the, good. We, yeah. I mean, we saw the Aubameyang one, we thought, fuck. Really? Yeah. No. yeah, we oh, thought. Man, it'd be sweet if I could get it up to it, man. Yeah. I so wanted yeah. to. One, once Barcelona shared it onto their social medias, I was thinking, fucking hell. Yeah. You know, could be a, I was crazy. planning to move to Barcelona because I love Barcelona. I was thinking I could move there for a month. Yeah. Beautiful, but it's still in the works. Yeah. Fingers crossed, eh? I mean, I'm going in July if you need to take it to. I'll come with you if you want. So do you reckon... I'll come with you regardless. Do you reckon your biggest achievement, is that going to be Martinelli? That'll be... That chain? I've been lucky enough that my three... The three biggest pieces for me have been my enamel pieces where I did obviously celebrating the Olympic gold. I did the Copper America win for Argentina. And then the World Cup travel bag. And then I've been commissioned. How perfectly timed. Was oh, mate, like, it's Jesus. beautifully timed. Yeah. yeah. So nice. And there's such nice people to do the work for as yeah. well. Everyone I've met so far has been an absolute mm -hmm. dream. And then I'm doing the World Cup. Um, I'm doing another piece for the World Cup, like to celebrate their win. Mm -hmm. And that's the next piece after the piece that I'm doing at the moment. Mm -hmm. The one that I'm doing at the moment is basically like a celebratory piece for this particular person. And his wife to celebrate like 20 years being together mm -hmm. oh, which is a nice. big piece because they're a champions league and premier league winner i'm getting a bit okay yeah, yeah, I'm, so, yeah. Wait, it's sorry if my mic knocks i've got a rough yeah. <laughs> oh, it's great to see There's a reason why i've got my legs crossed for us. <laughs> <laughs> it's great to see yeah. mate that's, but it, feel, that's it incredible. feels like amazing like are you on this full time by the way this is full time yeah like wow. the, the piece that i'm doing at the moment is it's taken me a long time. I massively overshot it. I thought, because it's like a new style, I'm working with oil and detail, I thought it would take potentially like two months, but it's taken me like a long, long time. I'm working like six day weeks at the moment, mm -hmm. like a long time. Like I'll leave at half seven, I'll get back home at eight o'clock. Wow. And it's just sort of, and a lot of the time it's me sitting in front of my iPad trying to learn this particular style just yeah. so I get it yeah, perfectly right. Well, yeah. I was going to ask, you know, how long does a particular piece take you? But I suppose it varies. Yeah. It? it varies, mate. It depends what, what side of the bed you get out from. Like some days How long has one took and how quick has one took? When we're talking enamel stuff. The first that. Martinelli one took me probably two weeks. Wow. Is, is that like a nine to five, two weeks? You say, or? I was doing other because at the time I didn't know whether he was going to have it or not because he didn't ask for the first one. Yeah, the first one was just painted just to experiment. Um, so the first one was, um, yeah, the first one took me about two weeks, and I was doing the pet portraits in between just because I didn't want to go two weeks. Obviously, I don't get sick pay or anything like that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't want to go two weeks without pay. Um, but yeah, it was nine to five sort of stuff, and the enamels as they are, you apply like a layer. And it takes seven hours for them to dry. Mm. So is it good to like work on a few pieces at once? So you can be like, oh, I'll yeah. do this and then I'll do that. And then. Yeah. So when I did the Martinez one, I worked on both of them at once. Yeah. And then wow. sort of took them up to them at, at whatever time they got finished. But it always takes longer than you think. Yeah. Uh, I'll have yeah. to hit you up at some point. I'm, I've Maybe just bought my beautiful. first home and I'm, I'm one of my, yeah. the bedrooms I'm turning into a studio a music space so I'll have to get a the, no not a self portrait a it's a big head <laughs> it's a big head he's got <laughs> yeah, it won't be it won't be a self portrait but I'd love to get something up on there it would be like I don't know like some musician or an actor yeah. or a musician would be sweet because like then as well yeah. there's so many good photos of them like. he likes Biggie so Biggie yeah. too oh yeah him. Biggie hey, that would be a sweet yeah. one have you seen the you couldn't get them to them Especially with that, that. <laughs> can I just yeah, reach out and get? Oh wait, yeah, that'd be a fucking struggle, wouldn't it? Oh. Jesus Christ, that's up, baby. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> 
Drink break. <laughs> Have you thought about doing one for Adele? <laughs> Mate, hey, that's, my, that's the next logical step. Yeah, it man. is. Fucking big Adele. This episode is brought to you by Lower Goat Barbers, and unless you've been sleeping under a rock, then you'd know. Exactly that, Render. Look at this beautiful, aesthetically pleasing location that we are now recording the podcast beautiful. at. All thanks to Lower Goat Barbers. Now, Lower Goat Barbers, who are they? What do they do? Not just supply to the number one podcast in Norwich, maybe even Norfolk, maybe even the world. They also supply buttery, creamy haircuts. Am I right? Yeah, just like Parmesan cheese. Now, as you can tell, Jack has not had a haircut from here. So, what are you going to do next? Book a haircut. Exactly. Who are you going to book it with? Lower Goat Barbers. Exactly that. Simply go to the App Store and download the Lower Goat Barbers app. Or check out their Facebook page or Instagram page. All the details down in the description. If you want a fucking JC haircut like this, then check out Lower Goat Barbers and they'll supply the creme de la creme. And don't forget to let them know that we sent you. Back to the video. Back to the video, baby. Have you had any weird... Celebrity reactions or interactions or anything oh, like man. that. I had a sinking one with. Really? Like every single person, because I think they respect because I'm a small business and I'm doing something oh, saying that. I mean, for a lot of them, maybe they just, well, when they agree to it, I guess it's like I'm doing them a service to try and sort of better my own self. And I'm only a small business, so it takes me a lot of time and effort to do them a piece of work but I can kind of understand on when the shoe's on the other foot like they get so many requests that that yeah. probably doesn't mean a lot to, so basically in short terms it means a lot to me and maybe not a lot to them mm-hmm. but she'd agreed to do uh, a promotional piece at the time when I was doing my pet portraits and I remember I was just it was it got a bit awkward in the end because I was constantly I'd sent the portrait and it had been received and apparently it said it had been enjoyed and stuff like that and it took like i had to email them about seven times on separate occasions probably two weeks apart so it was like i don't know say it was a three-month process for me just to get them to put a a post on their instagram story because it had already agreed to and i remember when the instagram story came around it was like a boomerang of them holding the portrait like that yeah and you could only see like a fucking third of the portrait because it was kind of like out of the picture i remember just thinking oh that's a bit shit like I took a while doing that portrait and in the end it was just fucking not yeah, appreciated nothing yeah because yeah, with with the Vogue one for example you get like I don't know I got like however many followers and I got however many messages and it was really really successful and she was so lovely and her post was so good and then the other one you go through this work and you get the reply to the email and you build it up to be something in your head and you get three followers trickling and you think <laughs> oh that is fucking brilliant. But yeah, maybe that. I suppose that's the comings and goes of the business, though, isn't it? You yeah, kind of I have to so. expect it in a yeah. horrible way. Hundred percent. You got to kiss a few, kiss a few frogs. Yeah, exactly. That's one yeah. of the things where I'm. Um, they're probably so fucking busy. They're probably thinking, "Oh fucking, hell, I'll just get a photo of me in this, yeah. this little piece of shit for a second. Just, <laughs> just yeah. fucking, just let's get this out of the way. Whereas I'm an email and not fucking. Please, please post it because <laughs> it could be make or break for me. Whereas for them, it's like oh. It, just another one of the hundred things but yeah oh god you know what that is oh i know what it is yeah hot soft alcoholic oh here we go (laughs) if you haven't watched the podcast before you'll know i mean uh, let me say again if you haven't watched the podcast before you might not know that we have a segment called hot soft alcoholic where we ask our special guest what is their favorite perfect situation where they've had their hot, soft, alcoholic favorite drinks? <laughs> now, Render, what do they have? You've got the Thirsty Thursdays gold card, or should we say, I don't know, whatever color card you want it to be. Yeah. But you get We're to. We're diverse around here, brother. It's, oh, it's yeah. unlimited. It can traverse across time, space, and humanity. There's no spend limit. No. no. Boys. So, well, that'd be nice. We that. want. Your favorite hot drink, your favorite soft drink, your favorite Ooh. alcoholic drink, but not just what it is, what situation you are, what c- you're in, what country are you in, what Almost. glass is it in? Do you want a couple ice cubes in there, a slice Ooh. of lime? What time zone? Yeah. 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 Oh, we want detail. We're talking detail. I give you detail, boys. We want yeah, detail. We so want start, detail. Us, 
Start us off with a hot drink. You know what's the perfect hot drink? And I'm going to give another little shout out to a local business, Amoretto, just down the road. Have you been? Yeah, I have. Yeah. Yeah. There's a slice of pizzas. You Unbelievable can get in there, slice yeah. of pizzas. Yeah. Unbelievable. I go there most days with work. I've got my little loyalty card. I fill that up probably once every couple of weeks to get my free little latte at the end. I'll say my perfect hot drink is a latte from there, sitting outside with either my girlfriend for the brownie points or more often than not, my girlfriend's brother. <laughs> we sit outside there, we have a nice little catch up and maybe I've got a little croissant in front of me. Mm. £1.50 or £1, depending on what one you go for. I'm a pan of chocolate man myself, so oh, I'll go for yeah. £1.50. You're a sweet boy. I'll reach that extra little bit deep into my pocket Yeah. and I'll go for the pan of chocolate and just sitting outside there, dipping it in on maybe like a nice summer's day. That's beautiful. Mm. Can't get any better than that. And oh yeah, I love a pastry. Yeah. Oh, mate, what sort of time well. is this? You having this? Mate, I'm talking eleven thirty. Oh. So have you started your paintings sort of, and then a bit of a lunch I've break? So I've just been in. I've probably been been in the office now for about. I, get, I normally get in for about eight. It's good for three, three and four hours. hours yeah. Three, yeah. So it's a nice little. It's a nice little reset before then I have my lunch a few hours later on. Yeah. And the sun's just at the perfect sort of spot. In oh. Life. Yeah, oh, stop it's a glorious it. voice. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> Do I love you, that. See, when you're there, it's like you feel this is where I'm meant to be right now. Oh man, yeah. it feels natural. Oh, yeah. it feels, I like that. It's second yeah. nature, voice. What a minute, know, it's second nature. Uh, there's something about coffee and sitting outside yeah. and just <laughs> having a chat <laughs> with some people a watching. As well, don't you? You yeah. feel a bit mm. maybe borderline Italian. Mm. You should be smoking yeah, an extremely long cigarette. No. Mm. Oh, yeah. oh, really? <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, I love that. I kind of want to be watch. there actually. Listen, mate, you're more than welcome. Oh, free. thanks. Yeah, I appreciate it. I'm there pretty much every day. Yeah, maybe. If I'm not with him, I'm on my own. We'll go for an amaretto date one day. Let's go for a little amaretto. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, take a break from Aviva and pop yourself down. I oh, will be, son. I oh, will be. Uh, soft drink. Soft drink. Ooh, if I go soft drink, what do I go for? I've got to go. If I go soft drink, perfect environment for a soft drink. I feel like it's when you're on an all inclusive holiday mm. and you've got the buffet there. Maybe you're in Tenerife. And you know you got those things of like orange juice, apple juice, water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And you don't want to go for the water because you want to get your money's worth. Yeah. So you maybe delve into like an apple juice and orange juice mm. in between like you, in between like your portions. And I'm I'm so partial to so an all inclusive, but I have to be maybe the apple juice. I feel like slides down. Glad you said that. Is that the morning, juice? afternoon, or evening? The morning, man. Morning, yeah. The morning yeah. Of the You're a bit ropey after all yeah. the all inclusive drinks the night before. Yeah, a bit, little bit of entertainment. Yeah. From here, yeah. I was, I was gonna, I was gonna say, on an all inclusive, usually when you give me a drink, it's not yeah. soft, no. <laughs> but in the morning, it's morning, fine. Mate, in the morning, oh. it's all about R and R, mate. It's all about that rest and recovery. I've, the thing is, mm. I think about when you go in an all inclusive and it's sunny, yeah, orange juice is a bit like 50 50, apple juice it's always is that, that condensed, quenched. isn't it? It's like that yeah. ribena orange juice, oh. where it oh. apple juice is. <laughs> But I think oh, yeah. the thing is, because <laughs> you've had so much sun, yeah. you don't need that I, vitamin D. I went to Greece with my girlfriend last year on an all-inclusive. Apple juice is phenomenal. And obviously you're drinking the all-inclusive cocktails yeah. and beers or whatever. Awful yeah. beer. But anyway, yeah. and in the they're morning fast. you're a bit ropey, you're fucking so dehydrated. <laughs> yeah. And you go to that little vending, that little dispenser, oh, mate, and you get a bit of apple that. juice. Always small glasses. That's yeah, so yeah, like this like, You've got yeah. to have two glasses. Give me a you? pint, you, you bastard. Take two yeah. yeah. And yeah. you fill that bad boy up with your <laughs> dirty scrambled egg Stop or whatever's on there. Oh, <laughs> um, yeah, it's good stuff. Man. Then render, I think it's our favourite. Oh, time. That's time to perfection. The alcoholic drink. The alcoholic drink. What would be my perfect alcoholic drink? So if you were going to, I suppose it's if you were going to probably, probably the same, maybe a little holiday vibe. You want an all, all inclusive? No, not the all inclusive. I'd say you're a bit more upper class. Potentially, dare everything I say. inclusive. Yeah. Dare I say. <laughs> you've just <laughs> had a, you've oh, just God, had a big commission. We can go yeah. in the future as big well. So you've just had a big commission. Say, yeah. say um, Real Madrid have just won the um, Champions League again for the yeah. sixth time in like. Five years, a little Modric piece. Yeah, say Benzema is finishing his yeah, career. Benzema, He's yeah. like, oh, I want this piece yeah. for like fifty k, fifty thousand. Nice manifestation Ranks. going yeah. on. Fifty k. Yeah. You know what I'll do? I'll be a toss up. It would either be a nice 
So I feel like you can't be summertime. That would have to be the time of year. Summer, summer, well, it's got to be summertime. summertime. They've, 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 won, they've won it in summertime. what, May? So, oh, yeah. Gosh, no, you are really thinking. <laughs> this is strategic thinking. Yeah, yeah. I haven't Maybe. quite thought that far ahead. Yeah, you know what? I'd say summertime. I'm either... I'm not one of... I'm not a big... I like a night out. Yeah. But I'm not like wake up, peel your face off the side of the concrete sort of night out. Yeah. yeah. We try to keep those nowadays. to a limited amount. 100%. You got, you know, you take them as and where you can. Mm. But most of the time, I love a, I love a pub. I love a pool scratching. Mm. And I love a game of pool. Oh, mm. yeah. What's your, okay. So the, the, the thing is with pubs with me, sorry to interrupt. No, I take it but away. Pubs for me, th there goes, you know, you walk in, good beer, great. Yeah. Pool table, yeah. it's like this pub is suddenly elevated in my. And if it's yeah. a pool table with a free button, oh. so you just there's no 50p jobby. Oh, it's so just they exist, do they? oh yeah, Temple Bar Temple used to do bar. it a couple of times. Yeah, you case. just press the button, game on, baby. You put yeah. your name down yeah. if people are. And it. Yeah. this is the first oh, day, first day. Irish place on the corner. Yeah, yeah. Oh, mate, this is the first day, first day card. We can take you to any free pool bar you want. No way. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, way. Nice. <laughs> so you're playing pool all maybe, night, baby. So you're in a pub, yeah. you've got pool. There's one or two things. I'm, I'm either in a pub with a pint of, what was it we had earlier? That was Asahi? Oh. Either, yeah, a bit of Asahi. Maybe even a bit of Peroni. Mm -hmm. I, like, I do like a Peroni. With like a nice packet of pork scratchings and you're with the boys, you're having a laugh. It's either that or I'm on holiday, I'm with my girlfriend. We're having a glass of white wine. I am partial to my, to my white wine. Oh, are you well, a, are you a skin in what, the summer? Yeah, like, yeah. potentially. What kind of um, white are you going for? Oh, mate, I'm not fussy. So yeah, it, you know, you a dry as man. As it's cold and it's out of the bottle, I'm fair. Serving all. Oh, boys, yeah, you know, I'm it's quite my dry, but a little bit more. Yeah, <laughs> he likes no, the cold white. You know what? I'm not. Yeah, I'll, I'll take I'll take them as they come. But I like a mm. cold one. Maybe one that's borderline sweet. Mm. Potentially, yeah. one that just it just trickles down. Ooh. That's what I like. That's beautiful. Yeah. Getting you excited here. Yeah, you? yeah. Getting you excited. Claps all round. That was that was brilliant. That was brilliant. Oh, Thanks cool. for clapping, cunts. Um, <laughs> there we go. I did want to quickly talk about, off topic slightly, but to do with art, have you seen the AI art stuff? Mate, it's incredible. Yeah, man. you just type in, mate, I love you know, it, Michael McIntyre drinking a cup of tea on yeah. Mount Vesuvius, and it could do it. It it sort is. of. Mate, I love it. Yeah. I think there's a place for it, honestly. Mm. I'm not... You might be able to get some inspiration off it. Mate, I might even little be able to chat GPT thing. Of portraits, you know what I mean? Yeah. Just, Just if I'm ever a bit bogged down, a bit run yeah. down. Yeah, chat GPT. I, I, I the thing is, AI art could never do what you do. No, no, but I could never do what AI art does. Yeah. Just like I could never do what... Mate, there's fucking thousands and thousands of thousands of artists on Instagram. Mm -hmm. A lot of the time you see their work and you think... Well, potentially, I feel like I could do that. But a lot of the time, you see work and you think, I can never be able to do that. And the mm. ones that I think, are oh, potentially be able to do that, people would have thought that about my work when I first started and probably do think about my work now. So I think there's a space for everyone. Like those oh, people yeah. who say, oh, oh definitely. Yeah, you know, AI art is ruining art. I just think, fucking hell, like, this. at the end of the day, if someone's going to buy a piece of my work, whether AI exists or doesn't exist, it wouldn't affect whether they do or, or don't. Yeah. So for me, it's just... One thing yeah, anyone should know about social media is there's always, always going to be someone that doesn't like your stuff. There's 100%. always going to be someone that does like your stuff. And you'll be very, very surprised, right? Yeah. It's like, I was thinking about this today, a little off topic. Yeah. Um, I was on a tough bit of work at work. And... I went on YouTube to try and get a bit, you know, clear my head a little bit. And I went down the reverbed and slowed uh, oh, yeah. train. You know, when you my hear favorite. a song, that's, they've slowed it down. And they've put a bit of reverb on it. Yeah. See, you might not know about oh, this world. Oh, oh, oh mate, the reverb and slow. Some, oh. Yeah, some yeah. tracks, well, horrendous. Well, I'll play a couple after the potty. Yeah, yeah. The um, uh, Drake Yeber's Heartbreak reverb. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. Oh, mate. Some, <laughs> some, you know that all too well. Yeah, oh, some people <laughs> will literally have no idea what it was. And to be honest, some some of them are awful. But yeah. you go through the comments, and was like, I love this. This is amazing. It's like, but I could play it to, you know, my dad and he'd be like, what is this fucking bollocks? Yeah. This sounds awful in <laughs> yeah. headphones. Oh, God, but that's yeah. not, the, you know, there's always a, 
there's always there's a always lane for of someone to fit course, in, isn't it? It's one of those things where it's like Hitler had followers. Jesus, fucking <laughs> 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 <You know>. hell! <laughs> no. I mean, we should go there potentially. No. <laughs> Is it? Should we? I mean, okay. Out of all the examples, <laughs> I was just about to give a slightly rational example. There, I'm, not a, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not a follower. I'm not. I'm not a follower. But what I'm saying is, oh god, it, <laughs> yeah. You know, to be fair, he had a lot of followers. I mean, as well. it, like Trump's. Extreme, yeah. Trump's now in a lawsuit, I think, and they, he got they were arrested. They were playing some. Um, I was funny enough on Talksport, but on Talksport they're saying, "Yeah, Trump arrested, blah blah blah," and they started playing through clips of his followers, like, "Yeah, I love this man. Uh, he's done nothing wrong to me." Yeah, all the you know. Anyway, uh, yeah, I know what you mean. Hitler did have followers. You're right. <laughs> yeah, we were. We were all, yeah. <laughs> anyway. If you haven't already, guys, please don't forget to Ugh. like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, all Wait, the audio platforms. This is not distracting anyone from the fact that you just said Hitler has followers. No, it doesn't. Li no. Literally yeah. have Everyone's no idea, what you're, no idea what you're on about. No idea what you're on about. Do you, um, I suppose it's probably a closing question. Yeah. Do you have anyone that you could recommend who could come on the podcast that's not too far out of Ooh. reach for us like Martinelli or Gabrielle Jesus? Mm, yeah. <laughs> Although if you can. Hello. Who, who do I think? And if you can't answer you know it now, I, keep it. You know it in mind. I love listen to on podcasts while I'm work. I love the old SAS people. Oh yeah, uh, I think they're unreal. I think yeah. some of their stories are unbelievable. What's the guy who wrote all the books? At Middleton, Big Ant. Yeah, I the think one who does the show. Well, yeah. yeah, and the, you know who I love? I love that Jason Fox. Mm -hmm. God, I think he's fucking. Class. Do you know him? Unfortunately not. Oh. <laughs> do you want to do a piece for him and then get them? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'd love to get someone. Yeah, who's been in the SS because they've got banging stories. We would them. love to have oh, like yeah. some veteran I've on or something stories. like that. Maybe that's another. We Mate, they're the ones. Because yeah. mm -hmm. they've been through. I can't imagine like obviously with our the stuff the sport, that goes on, even music. Like everyone's a lot of people have got respect for those certain fields, especially music and uh, mm. sport. Everyone wants to be a musician. Everyone wants to play sport. But with the SAS, I feel like. And either, even the army, they are doing things that, just about brilliant, they are doing things that no one else can do. Yeah. So it's such a unique insight. Everyone wants to be a bit yeah. involved. It makes you feel a little bit sort yeah. of excited listening to this. This ain't story, easy but. just to slot in and become nah, someone in the SAS. It's not SAS, just kicking yeah. a ball about. You're parachuting yeah. off a thing, landing on yeah. a landmine. Yeah. Doing all that so kind of stuff. what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you a serious question and I'm going to really... Right. Just throw you off and show you a cat. Hit, hit me where it hurts. A scouse cat. Scouse cat. Anyway. <laughs> if you could tell yourself something five years ago, what would it be? Five years ago? Oh, mate, don't buy Telcoin, man. Telcoin? <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. I lost that. three big ones on that. Did you? Really? Mate, it was Why did you put three terrible. big ones on? Because oh. my friend who... So I'm I'm quite a naive guy naturally, but I'm very over enthusiastic. Mm -hmm. My friend is the same, and two naive over enthusiastic <laughs> guys is a recipe for fucking disaster. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And he told me I'm on something bigger. Like, <laughs> I think I could have a way out, and I thought, you know what, mate, I'm all ears. He told me about it. And I thought, fucking hell, it's double my fucking net worth in a matter of months, maybe even weeks, and then sell up. <laughs> Uh, I'll too a, easy. I'll be a millionaire. So I invested these, I invested fucking some money, you know, like everyone did in crypto at one point. Oh yeah, And baby. then after the first day, I thought, fucking hell, I'm 400 pound up here. The grand plan is all starting to work. And then about a month later, you know the Island Boys? Those yeah. blokes of the real Island Boys. <laughs> they did like a promotional video for these lot, saying like, invest in Tel coin where the Island... <laughs> And that's what I knew. I was well and truly <laughs> fucked. Oh, and geez. I was going to never see any of that money. That's a catch out. <laughs> yeah. I remember logging back onto the sink and thinking, oh, fucking hell, I can't keep this money in there for that longer. And I hadn't checked it ever since I was up £400. And it was fucked. I was just, oh, it was gone. Where would you like to see yourself in five years? Um, oh, Jesus Christ. Um, five years. I don't know, really. Five years, I'd like to. I'd like to it, it make my work if I am doing what I'm doing now, just a little more sociable in the fact that I'm bringing other people in around me. Because, don't get me wrong, 
by no means my like bloody rolling around in a Range Rover fucking on the verge of buying a new house and all that sort of stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, but there is definitely avenues where you can potentially make yourself a little bit more financially free, although that's not ultimately my end goal. Yeah. I'd like to sort of, even if it's like, say if I've got a communal workspace or I'm like, I own it where there's like other artists in the same sort of area mm-hmm. or even other people like what you do with music where you can bring people in around you, just create like an independent space for creatives. Yeah. And maybe even some people in other countries who are slightly less advantaged. Like an artistic hub. Means. Yeah. I think yeah. that'd be pretty cool, man. Mm. Cause it's only like I got a lot of my breaks were just an email or an Instagram message mm. away and anyone who's any good at art. And there's so many people out there. There's, I, sp- I suppose the that's same. the thing with social media though isn't it that you're one step away from you can connect mm. everyone though. there's uh youtube as i watch i'm thinking of a very specific example right now but a guy called con who does the filming and editing stuff for sidemen um right. and he basically now has uh a lot if you like a big warehouse which he's converted into his office and they'll be like a suite of computers and editing spaces of people he's employed to come in, edit footage. They're all together doing the same thing on the same path with the same goal. And it's a massive creative space to do what they want to do. He's like the, the founder of it as such, but he has all these people under him, but they all work together to achieve the same goal. And it's like, I guess what you're saying is a similar thing where everyone can come together and achieve the same thing. And so he's created like, I don't know where he was a couple of years ago, but he's Mm -hmm. got this massive break. And then it's like bringing other people in from around that. Mate, that'd be fucking sweet. Cause a lot of people can do what I do. Obviously for that guy with the sidemen, he's Mm -hmm. like, he's the up, he's the top 1%. Yeah, a lot of people can probably do what I do, so it's about like giving those people like the opportunity. Yeah, yeah, because that's what would make it. That's what would feel like mm. really good. And some of those people might get opportunities that they're not right for, but you can give each other an exchange opportunities yeah, as well. Yeah, like, that's how I got my last piece. Like someone, it didn't suit the, like the one that I said I couldn't, I couldn't share. It didn't suit her particular style, so she offloaded that client onto me, mm-hmm. who could potentially do that work. Yeah. And there's a lot of work like I've had like fairly high uh, or, or fairly, like pretty well-known clients. I remember getting one guy who was like a Premier he, he played football in the Premier League and he sent me a photo and he wanted a particular style. And I just thought, I can't fucking do that. Yeah. Like it was like, because it just wasn't in the style that I work in and I wasn't willing to create like a, a low quality water just down version s- of my work the just to ship it off to him. Yeah. Cause ultimately that's going to be on the walls yeah. for years and years to come. I don't want yeah. people to go around his house and think, Oh, that's shit. Yeah. So I just didn't do it in the end. Yeah. Whereas if like you said, I had other people around me, I could be like, Oh, this is a great opportunity for mm-hmm. me. That could change the landscape of their work. Yeah, absolutely. So maybe that's, that's exciting though. It's, yeah. It can always happen. It's early days for you, yeah. my friend. Yeah. Early days. I'm going to end it on. This TikTok I found the other day, I thought it'd be a nice, funny way to end the podcast. <laughs> so I'm going to play it as loud as possible. I want you to listen in nice and carefully. And for the uh, listeners, uh, you'll just have to hear it out. But for the viewers, uh, I'll throw the TikTok on the screen. Um, it doesn't really matter, the video, to be honest, but I'll try and sort of play it in front of the camera as well. And uh, <coughs> in front of you guys. It's about a cat with a Scouse accent. So, sorry? A woman has left Twitter in hysterics after pointing out that she thought a cat had a scouse meow and when you hear it, it's impossible to unhear. <laughs> <laughs> Rachel's now trying not to be heard laughing on the radio <laughs> so she's not complicit in this whole thing. Fucking <laughs> meow! Fucking meow! Meow! Yeah, <laughs> when you hear it, it's impossible to unhear. <laughs> it's like the roll Wait, of is the R, isn't it? Is this how you suck <laughs> up your voice? <laughs> 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 meow. Fucking <laughs> meow. I'm going to fucking lick my milk. Stevie G left in the Premier League. Thank you for watching, everybody. 
please Jesus, check out Archie's <laughs> socials. They're all going to be in the description. And uh, if you haven't already, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. And audio listeners, raise five star on all platforms. You've been watching Thirsty Thursday with Bean, Yenda, and Archie. Peace. Peace. Thirsty Thursday. Thirsty Thursday. Thirsty Thursday. Real fucking Thursday. Thirsty Thursday. Thirsty Thursday. Thirsty Thursday. Real fucking Thursday. Thirsty Thursday. Thirsty Thursday. Thirsty Thursday. Real fucking Thursday. Festive 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 fest